Uh, good morning. We're on August the 6th in our daily Bible study. Uh, thank you guys for being here, and we're continuing to read in Ezra. And one more time, um, we're getting to read about them rebuilding the temple and how important that was to them to rebuild that. It was, it was so important. In fact, you know, just when the foundation got built, um, there was those of them um, who shouted and, and, and just, you know, it was like being at a football game and they score the winning touchdown. Uh, the shouts were so loud that it said it could be heard in the far distance. But then the older ones who had seen the temple before, the first temple, actually wept just at the foundation being laid. So the momentum was going and they're building this and, you know, this is where they declare that God is so good. He is good to his people. His faithful and uh, love for Israel endures forever. Uh, it's a famous uh, scripture that we use a lot, that we quote a lot. But, but this is where I looked at it today. So once again, we see, um, we see the good times, we see the bad times. But the Bible never tells us that we won't have hard times. He never tells us that we won't go through trials and tribulations. In fact, he tells us that we will and to take cheer because he's overcome the world. He tells us that he's overcome all those trials and tribulations for us, but we will go through them. We just don't go through them alone. So this is another picture. Glorious, glorious, glorious um, uh, jubilation, triumph. It's a win. Um, Things are just going good. Have you ever had that period of time in your life when, man, I, things have never been better than they are right now. Everything's good, and then bam, the bottom falls out. Well, that's what happened to them. They're in the middle of building this temple. The foundation gets laid, and everybody is shouting. They're either weeping for joy or they're shouting for joy. Um, and the anxiety, uh, the, uh, not the anxiety, the uh, energy and the excitement builds, 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 and then boom, here it comes. They start lying about them. And they send a letter to the king and they, you know, reveal certain lies. They, they talk about certain lies. And then bam, at the end of our reading today, here it is. When this letter from the king was read to them, they hurried to Jerusalem. Then with a show of strength, they forced the Jews to stop building. Ah, uh, man, that's a picture of our life. I mean, wow, good, 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 good. And then, ooh, there it is, there it is. But the thing is, is that um, morning may come at night, but dancing comes with the morning. Uh, it, all things are the darkest right before the dawn. You're just uh, so close to your breakthrough when something bad happens that you're tempted to give up before it actually happens. That's just a picture of that. And then I want to get into the first Corinthians. Oh, it's so good. <sighs> first Corinthians chapter two, chapter three, we're going to start in verse six. Yet when I, Paul, am among mature believers, ah, oh, can't wait for that day when I really think I'm a mature believer. I've got a long ways to go. I'm, First 15 years of my journey, I said I was still on milk. Maybe I'm not on milk all the time, but mature believer, what does that mean? Anyway, okay. Um, yet when I, Paul, am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom. So remember, yet, uh, not yesterday, but, well, yeah, it was yesterday, Sunday, we talked about wisdom and that God's wisdom is not the world's wisdom and that you can't figure God out. So here we are, we're continuing that conversation. I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. So have you ever, you know, just had it in you that oh, I wanna have this conversation, I wanna explain, you know, the principles of the spiritual foundation to this person, and you just, oh, you pray, and you're just so prepared. <coughs> <coughs> And they just look at you like, what planet are you from? <laughs> These words are meant to encourage us that when that happens, we, we don't lose heart. We don't let it discourage us. I mean, if it happened back then and it happened to Paul, I, I would venture to guess Paul's probably one of the greatest orators that there ever was. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Um, he talked to a lot of people. <laughs> 
And if they thought that what he was saying was foolishness, why would we be upset when they think what we're saying is foolishness? But then it goes on to explain it. No, the wisdom we speak is the mystery of God. That's our wisdom. It's a mystery. It's a mystery of God. His plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory. See, it's made for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. If the mysteries of God had been made known, they never would have crucified Jesus. And where would we be today? How different would our life look today? Now this is foundational. Listen, in fact, I want you to get a pencil and paper. I want you to take a few notes. This is important stuff. <clears throat> that is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind can imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Boy, talk about a scripture. But it was to us that God revealed these things. And how did he reveal it? So we've been talking about the mysteries of God. We've been talking about the wisdom of God that is foolishness to the world. So, so God's wisdom is a mystery to the world, but he's revealed it to us. And how did he reveal it to us? Um, <laughs> he revealed these things by his spirit, capital S. God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, reveals the mysteries to us. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, little s. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit, capital S. And we have received God's Spirit did you get that? Did you get, get what was just, I just read this out of the Bible. We have received God's spirit and not the world's spirit so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So we know the mysteries. Now then, how does this work? Okay, how does this work? Is, is, there, is there a magic formula that makes this work? Well, well, listen, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. That's the, that is the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, capital S. Using the Spirit's, capital S, words to explain spiritual truths. So number one, first and foremost, these words ought to completely do away with anybody saying that there is no such thing as um, speaking in other tongues. Prayer language of the Holy Spirit, it's written not just here. There's many places it's written. It was prophesied about. Um, and then number two, it ought to do away with any doubts whatsoever um, what the purpose of it is. It's to speak the mysteries of God. So I have the mind of Christ. In fact, that, that follows. I'm going to get there. This is the chapter that tells us and promises us that we have the mind of Christ. Well, I've got the mind of Christ, but I still don't know what to do. How do I know what to do? Speak in tongues. Speak the mysteries of God and, and have it come forth and ask for an interpretation. And I'm talking about in your prayer closet. Just you and God. Speak out using your prayer language and speak the mysteries of God out loud and ask him to interpret it. I, I mean, it works. It, uh, why do I know it works? Number one, I've done it. But how did I even know to do it? It's written. For it is written. <clears throat> but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deepest secrets. Oh, I want to know his secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. 
and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we have understanding these things, for we have the mind of Christ. But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. I'm gonna repeat it again because I messed it up the first time. But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is revealed to us through our secret prayer language. Wow. Wow. That answers all questions for me. And it did a long, long, long time ago. Uh, Proverbs 2, 24 through 25. The Lord directs our steps, so why try to understand everything along the way? Well, I have this theme about understanding and, and knowing and but I, but I want to take this to a different place. The Lord directs our steps. See, when I'm activating the mind of Christ in me through the, uh, my prayer language, when I'm praying, praying out prayer language, he's guiding my steps. That's how he directs my steps. And it says right here, he will direct my steps. So it's him, not me. The Lord directs my steps. When I choose to pray the mysteries of God out for myself. Hmm. And I'll finish with, don't trap yourself by making a rash promise to God and only later counting the cost. Good words to live by. You guys enjoy this magnificent Monday.